If I want one thing from God, it would be to make kind of my path clearer to me, or make me content in it not being clear. A scene there from Young Once, where young Christians are on the quest for love and marriage. So in that quest for relationships, it's also hard to ignore the cultural phenomenon that is The Bachelor, America's number one dating and relationship show. And it's especially hard to ignore when one of the front runners on that show is also on a Christian docu-series, Young Ones, produced right here at Crossroads. Let's bring in the team working on that series. Carolyn Innes is the communications director here. We have Isaac Hainkamp. He's in charge of digital marketing. And of course, everyone knows Lorna, our CEO here at Crossroads. Uh, Lorna, let's start with you. Why decide to step into this docu-series? Because when it's the most uh, important issue in a young person's life is how will they connect their understanding of God with how will they connect with a partner for the rest of their life, with the big choices of what job do I have, how do I chart my course. We just can't surrender that space and say we will let the people with the most viewers, the biggest dollars, and the most completely God-void view mm. to shape it. It's God's heart that people are in loving relationships. We need to be part of the community making the role modeling, the teaching around loving relationships. Carolyn, I guess my question then is, you know, Christians are going on The Bachelor. Christians are watching it in droves. What's the tie in there? What's the, what's the fascination? Well, it's interesting. I mean, the reality of this show, The Bachelor, is that not a lot of these couples are even working out, right? There's been, I think, 36 seasons of the show and maybe five married relationships out of it. So when you think about um, the pursuit of a marriage relationship, it's fascinating that Christians are applying to be on this show. And I wonder if it's because the outcome is what people are hoping for is an engagement in marriage. And so just knowing that that could be an outcome, mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of ways that people are trying to find, you know, dating relationships, marriage relationships today. And this is maybe one avenue, whether or not it works, the track record isn't great. Yeah but they're still interested in that traditional form, which is quite, yeah. quite interesting. It's fascinating that people still value this marriage relationship so much so that they would go on reality television mm -hmm. to find it. Isaac, you're trying to find the audiences for Young Ones, of course. Uh, is there some crossover here? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely crossover because of Cassie, uh, the girl that we have on our show, Young Ones, right? So um, if we run ads and, and we get our content in front of people, who are not only just interested in The Bachelor, but are actually a part of this fan base that Cassie's built because of the show and this group of followers that actually want to see her win. If we get our content in front of them, we almost play into this backstory of where she's coming from before she went on to The Bachelor. And I think the fact that she's actually in a relationship uh, in the first season of our show and then trying to figure it all out in the second season really plays into the storyline of it and it mm -hmm. gives uh, people kind of this outside perspective of what's Cassie actually like when she's in this relationship and people are super interested about that. Yeah, and it gives her more airtime as well to hear her full mm -hmm. testimony and not just sound bites that uh, a network might choose. Okay, let's take a look at some of that and some of the questions that they're asking. Here's Cassie on Young Ones processing her dilemma with her sister. I don't know if it's just not the right timing for me with him or if he's just not the guy for me because if he was then I would be I just want to be 100% in if I'm going to get back into it. But aren't you kind of happy? Why would I be happy? I mean, I don't have any doubts about my decision not to be with him. Oh. Well, this is the first time I'm hearing you say you have no doubts. Because every other time, you have said that you have. Because before, you were like really worried about it. You're like, could I be happy? Could I not be? Getting back with Kaylin, I know where it's gonna go. Like we're probably gonna get married and have a family within like the next like three years if we <laughs> start talking right now. I don't know if that's right. I don't know if Kaylin's right. And so I don't wanna I want I don't wanna settle until I know something's right. I think questions that a lot of us have. Uh, <laughs> Carolyn, uh, what's the difference between relationship building on young ones versus something like The Bachelor? Well I kind of think of it in that the relationships on The Bachelor are a lot like a pressure cooker where everything has to happen really quickly and they hope that they can form this relationship within a matter of weeks. Whereas on Young Ones, the, the relationships that we're documenting have a long history. It's been you know five years and on and off that Cassie and Kaylin are working through their feelings for each other. So um, that's an obvious difference. It's just the time that it takes mm -hmm. to forge these relationships. But also in Young Ones, 
we're bringing in more of the community that supports Cassie into the conversation. So where The Bachelor, they're removing her from her life and putting in her into this alternate reality to find romance. Our team actually is coming into her reality and saying, we want to document your life. We want to connect with the people who have shaped you. So we talk to her parents, her friends, um, and really find out what can make a relationship work. Hmm. Isaac, what is it about fast relationships that seems to resonate hmm. with young people out there? Yeah, so, uh, I mean, if we were talking about the fast relationships I see in something called The Bachelor, uh, these are very easy relationships to get in and out of, right? So mm -hmm. uh, for me, when I kind of see my generation and uh, kind of anybody who, who's dating nowadays, from, from what I've seen majority, the biggest struggle is, is when the level of commitment comes down to the wire, right? And it's, am I willing to be committed to this person through thick and thin? Like, mm -hmm. uh, do I love this person to the extent of being able to look past the flaws and, and being able to agree that it's not going to be perfect. Nothing here is going to be perfect, but we can work through these things together. And I have my own weaknesses also and try to figure out, OK, is this something that we're going to work through? And that to me is um, just something that fast dating doesn't bring hmm. bring with it. Right. It's it's there's no fight for commitment. Right. Um, it's very easy to, to get out. Disposable. Yeah, very disposable. Hmm. Carolyn, uh, you guys really care about these characters, not only the people on Young Ones, but you're watching The Bachelor, too. Uh, why? Well, you can imagine for anyone going on America's number one reality show, your life is under a microscope. But especially when you're on a docu-series at the same time that it's airing, um, I can understand how Cassie would be facing a lot of criticism or um, trying to process how these two reflections of relationships uh, happening at the same time, that, that's just got to be really hard. So we feel for her. We know that it's challenging, uh, but we think it's really important for people to see this side of Cassie and to know that we're going to be telling a faith story that won't get played out on network television. Okay, let's go back to Young Ones, hearing from Cassie's former boyfriend talking marriage over with his grandma. Take a look. Grandma, get this predicament though that Tony's in. Tony not only is he looking for a job to pay off this debt that he has accrued, but he also is dating the girl of his dreams yeah. and wants to get engaged pretty shortly. Yeah. Here. Well, that's stupid. Whoa. Why, why, why was that s stupid? Do you think that he should... He's too young to get married. He should wait What's until he's good... 30. Till How 30? old are you when you got married? I just think he should be older, a little more settled before he takes the plunge or the leap. Okay, Isaac, let me ask you, how do you feel about uh, the role model that The Bachelor's kind of put mm. himself out there as? As a man, uh -oh. you're the man on this panel, uh -oh. so talk to us <laughs> about that part of it a little bit. Uh, yeah, so I mean, just, just to be kind of blunt about it, uh, the kind of man that, that a guy like Colton would portray on the show, and I hope the kind of man that uh, girls and, and females would expect nowadays should be very different from, from the Colton we see on that show, right? So. Um, to me, I think they kind of make his way of going about it very innocent. But if we looked at it from a big picture, um, a lack of commitment is not an innocent thing at all, right? Like, I think majority of girls would say that being a womanizer is uh, a big issue. And they wouldn't want to be in a relationship with somebody who's, who's doing that, right? But here we have a show who's literally built their model off of what we would consider outside of that context to be uh, being a womanizer. And so I think that's super interesting uh, that just because it's a reality TV show, it's made to look innocent, but it's not actually. Lorna, this is, this is tricky ground, <laughs> wading into love and relationships and, and kind of having a parallel sphere to The Bachelor here. It is, and it reminds me of some research that Rodney Stark uh, uncovered as he wrote about the history of Christianity. So here we are in the fast-paced, crazy super world of uh, seeing what's happened at The Bachelor. You know, the, the weekend we premiered it, um, the, we premiered Young Ones, we have 64 articles going out in entertainment magazines talking about this other reality. Um, Back when Christianity was setting the original role modeling for relationships, it was coming up against the culture of Rome where men were not getting married. Men were waiting much later in life or not marrying at all. Rome was crumbling. And as the Christian community grew around the ethos of lifelong covenantal community relationship, marriage, uh, health blossomed. The health of society blossomed. Christianity 
took off. Uh, in part because its social structure was so wise because it was built on the principles of God. Mm -hmm. So it is tricky ground to say, we're trying to actually model uh, centuries of biblical ideal by jumping into the hottest uh, pop culture phenomena on marriage and dating. And we want to say there's actually a much better way to do it than the fascination with The Bachelor. So it's tricky ground for Crossroads, but that's why we need our donors and our partners to uh, join us on this new adventure, catch the timeliness of the marketing, and really care about young adults. Aside from what we're doing now with the reality series, a Bible study is rolling out also on Castle for those who really do want to go spiritual and who really do want to know what is God's heart for my hunger for relationships. Mm -hmm. You're going to love the Bible study with Sean Naylor that goes with Young Ones. Youngones.ca, you can find all of it and Castle, of course. Thank you guys for being here. Thank, Thank you. you.